One of my favorite movies of all time is The Wizard of Oz. I first saw it when I was little, and there were a few things that kind of scared me about it. Of course, there were those creepy flying monkeys, but it was the twister that hit Kansas that really freaked me out. Now today, Dorothy would have known exactly when to take shelter from the storm. It's got nothing to do with Oz, but there is some wizardry. Here's Adam Yamaguchi to explain. The United States has the highest concentration of twisters, or tornadoes, in the world. Tornadoes are born from large supercell thunderstorms, but only about 20% of those storms produce tornadoes. The science of tracking the severe weather that spawns tornadoes is important for issuing warnings, but collecting accurate data can be challenging. The real trick is understanding which of these supercells are gonna make tornadoes and which ones aren't. Predicting that is critical if we're not gonna have a huge number of false alarms. I traveled to Boulder, Colorado to visit the Center for Severe Weather Research and meet Dr. Joshua Werman, the man who developed a radar system to track and get as close to tornadoes as possible. It's called Doppler on Wheels. So this is the Doppler on Wheels, and this is what we use to chase tornadoes, go inside hurricanes, get inside blizzards. Well, I am in the market for a tornado chasing vehicle, so can you walk me through some of the features here? Basically, the Doppler on Wheels is a state-of-the-art weather radar. The main thing is we've put everything on a truck and a platform which can go into these storms. Dr. Werman uses multiple dows, as they're called, each built with reinforced steel doors and hydraulic leveling feet to keep them from tipping over in 100 mile per hour winds. The real action end of the whole radar is right here. And this is our radar antenna and pedestal. During the storm, scientists analyze all the data the Doppler radar is sending back. So the person who sits here in the midst of a storm is sort of the maestro coordinating and choreographing the movement of all the vehicles on site. And he's controlling which way that big antenna is scanning because we can scan back and forth like that. Sometimes we take vertical slices to get cross sections through the storm. I get to the storms. I don't wait for them to come to me. And by getting to the storms, I can get thousands or tens of thousands of times finer data, both horizontally, vertically, in time. Just by getting closer, we were able to revolutionize what we could see in tornadoes. But chasing tornadoes can be risky. Tornadoes are very dangerous. We've never had an injury. We've never had a severely damaged Dow because we're very careful. Violent tornadoes don't stop Dr. Werman from measuring what's happening inside of one. We are dropping a series of what we call pods that are basic weather instruments. We drop a series of them in the path of the tornado vortex. The goal is to have the core of that vortex pass directly over at least some of these pods. If one of these gets hit and it has damage, I'm a happy man because it means that damaging winds and debris were observed by this pod and we can still get the data right up to the second that the instrument was destroyed. With the help of Dr. Werman's Doppler on wheels, tornado warning lead times have improved from under 10 minutes to 13 to 15 minutes. You kind of secretly love this, don't you? I love my job. It's peering inside a tornado and realizing that no one has ever seen that map of winds. And it's that moment of discovery which gets me up in the morning. 